Oh, yeah. You're listening to the Elijah Bailey Show, Oklahoma's favorite podcast. Yeah. 100% auditorial pleasure. Dig it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> I think I think you'll enjoy your time with it, my friend. As we all do, whenever there's a game that we've been like waiting for and anticipating, it comes out, and you're like, "Hmm, this reminds me of Devil May Cry Five that I played like two nights ago." <laughs> Except for not as good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like it's not bad. It's just. I haven't made it in yet. Like I was, I don't think I was disappointed. Like it's been, it's been rough, rough, whatever. Like I need to go. How many hours with, you been into it so far? Uh, I played an hour today, so it's like three chapters. Oh, okay. So yeah, you know, you know putting, yeah, putting, you're, putting you're, a, you're putting a little work in. Putting a little work in on the sunshine. Yeah. I'm Stevie wondering it right now. What time um, did you start streaming this morning? Um, like around eight something. So I was streaming to stay up so I could cook a little bit later and I had to go to the store. So I was trying to get that stuff done. So I was like, well, you know, I kind of need to stream something different than, you know, Fighters or Naruto Shippuden Storm. So I was like, oh, yeah, this is on Game Pass. Let me go ahead and check it out. It's just about time to get in there. And, and I was like, I, I'm pretty sure I know the mechanics. So it shan't be that bad. <laughs> and uh and plus, plus that is a game we've been like kind of looking forward to <laughs> it, it like i will say like you're not kind of looking forward to well no taking out the factor that there's not a lot of jumping around like dante and neo and them do like it makes it a little bit simpler but then i was like oh i need some of that jumping dude this dodge system <laughs> is not <laughs> but said, oh, I, I see why they jump all around and everything yeah it made me it 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 made me wish for something I didn't have, but then I was also like, oh well, you know, that's kind of like how you know Grave would move anyway. So you know, it gives you that replication. And then it had me thinking of all the other series that were out around that time. But uh, yeah, you'll you'll enjoy it. You go back and watch the gameplay. It's a little bit brighter this time. Like probably about halfway through, maybe thirty minutes. I'm able to get to right a screen. Yeah, somewhere okay. around there. So the rest of it, like we go back through at least a level, like a level and a half or something like that, where it's brighter. And it does make the world a difference because there's more color, there's more pop. Like that first time through, I was like just like putting on the aim, the auto aim system, just to see where people were. I was like, I hope mm. nobody's left on the screen. So because it, it was that dark. It was that dark. Very ah, dark. just for the people out there, Elijah is talking about the great gun gave. Gun grave. Uh, gun grave, that's right. Gun grave. Great. It was very disrespectful. But the video game might be more disrespectful. Go ahead. Um, yeah. It's this it's, it's a classic anime if you guys haven't watched it. Very good anime. Love right? betrayal. Hell yeah. It was good. Dude. Uh, and they, they, this ain't the first video game they try to make from it. I think this is like the second or third. Second, yeah. I want to say third, VR. but I know for a fact second. Yeah. yeah so, so this. Yeah. If you're if you're an anime fan and you watch Gun Grave, just kind of stick with it. You know it'll it, it is what it is. Uh, get through the tutorial and then follow the story. There is like we did at the end of the stream, we did like a history, which there's a button you can push and it'll take you from the very beginning all the way up to the events of the game. So hmm. it kind of catches you back up on the backstory without having to watch the series. But I would watch the series like 100. Okay. percent Um. But let's start this thing off, right? Because we're already like seven minutes in. Yes. And really like four because three of those minutes we were setting up. Uh, in typical fashion. And three, 
two, one, welcome, and welcome back to your weekly source of anime, comics, video games, pop culture, news, reviews, opinions, and more, where we don't lick our fingers before we turn the pages on The Elijah Bailey Show. We like to preserve the integrity of the comics we're reading, and yes. today is a comics episode. Um, God, this is a place where we believe the Dora Milaje are badass, but the Midnight Angels are even more badass. With me as always, and we switch spots. This man is to the other side now. The man who Hello. once beat Batman in an automobile race, and we know Hello. how good of a driver Batman. he is. Uh, the man who Franklin Richards would say is his biggest influence in life, the Buckety. And then I am one of your other hosts, the leader of the Blue Lantern Corps. The Blue. The one who beat Thanos in a thumb wrestling contest. I am oh, Elijah 5000. Hey, he had the Infinity Gauntlet on, but you got a hook. And down, hook and smash. That's how you win thumb wrestling contests. Uh, this is not 4.30 on Monday. It's actually Tuesday, the 29th of November. And this is the 339th episode of TEBS and Let's Talk Video Games. But before we do that, if you look down in the corner, you can see our sponsors. We have a sponsorship with Switchery, the uh, online, number one online store for Nintendo Switch, Switch LED or OLED and Switch Lite accessories, protective cases and thumb grips. Use our promo code EDGE10 to get 10% off your purchase whenever you're trying to upgrade the appearance of your Nintendo Switch. And also, if you like ramen and you want the world's first low carb high protein and plant based instant ramen use promo code edge 2g to get five dollars off your purchase from emmy eats again emmy eats.com five dollars off by using edge 2g for your order they send it to you and it actually have locations now where you can find them in select stores and areas near you so you can go online figure out where they are and go pick them up maybe you can use the promo code in the store i don't know try it i mean they <laughs> give <laughs> try hey, it it do might it. work do hey, it do it do it um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. If you're new to the show, we have three segments. The first segment, we're going to go into the comic book reviews for this month. Second segment is all of our news. And today we're covering Black Panther Wakanda forever. And I'm going to give you a little bit of taste of how I felt about Black Adam. Uh, I have so many good things. I don't know if it was a drink set flicks being there with my wife or just fucking flicks like, do, flicks do, uh, Hey, they got the atmosphere. Ice entice you with their beverages that they are so uh yeah yeah they do a yeah. good job what's up k tap k tap in the stream hey shout out to shout out to my son uh today he went to the i think one of his classes they had like a literacy class they go to like you no know, remember back in the day you go to a library yeah. and you um you uh you know check out a book and whatnot Mm -hmm. So I pick him up from school and we're going through his whole list of what he's done throughout the day. He's like, uh, he hit on literacy. We went to media. We went to the media center. Dad, you know what? You're going to be proud of me mm -hmm. on the book I got. I'm mm -hmm. like, what'd you get? Mm -hmm. And I'm driving. So he hands me the book. I kind of reach back and grab it up. He got the Dragon Ball Super mm -hmm. manga. Nice. Uh, the tournament of the two universes. Mm -hmm. tournament of oh, the, uh, the exhibition. Uh, Expedition, yeah, yeah. He, he got that book. And I was like, boy, what you know about reading manga? You know how to read this? <laughs> and, but then it, after we shared that moment, it kind of hit me. I was like, wow, that's dope. Like, yeah. this is in public school libraries. libraries. Yeah. Wow. We had to go to dark web websites. Just to get a printout. Just just to get a printout. One page. Yeah. One page. And then yeah. you would know the whole you story. You got to pass it around. You got to pass it around. No, you gotta keep that. You gotta sit on that knowledge to drop. Like, oh, let's talk about it. Oh, y'all know Freezer. Yeah. Well, what you yeah. know about Long Neck? He's yeah. coming down. The, what's his name? I don't know, but he's got yeah. a long neck. I don't neck. know his name, but he got a long neck. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's crazy. Like, I'm. I go to Walmart and I look down the you know, dog food aisle, then turn, you know, to make my round. And you just see him sitting there next to the Obama's book. Like, yeah, they're, they're chilling. Yeah, like. It's a, it's a normal thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. But I wanted to I wanted to make mention of that because I thought that was a that was a, a mind happy blowing. moment. Yeah, yeah it was that's a happy crazy. Moment. Yeah. So hopefully he don't disrespect that book. He but won't. Anyway. And then also Kindle, thank you for uh, liking the stream. Let's go ahead and jump in to segment one and uh, do our comic book releases. Now, what we do is we cover the top publishers. Which, oh shit, I'm making this go away. Hang on. I know, I know. 
Okay, there we go. Like it's it's like a, a disappearing act, but we cover the top publishers that be. We give you two comics from Marvel, two from DC, one comic that we recommend from Image Comic, and then another one for Dark Horse Comics. So let's get into it. Last week we were kind of we were heavy on Image. We might or last month we might even had two for Dark Horse, but I'll go ahead and oh, did I actually get this picture? Is it the uh, you about photon? To yeah, there we go. Bam! This picture right here, Monica Rambo, Photon, issue number one of five, written by Eve Ewing, art by uh, Michael uh, Maria, and then covered by Lucas Wernick. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are seven different variant covers. Now, variant prices always vary. Uh, and Marvel is very uncanny in the fact that they don't give you those prices. All they know, all you need to know is like the comic itself <laughs> is $3.99. It's rated T. Plus. It's a 32 page banger. It says Universal Powerhouse Monica Rambeau stars in her very own all new adventure. The hero known as Photon has been charged with making a very special very cosmic delivery should be light work get it for monica if family drama doesn't hold her back so almost like a little carol danvers we do know that she took up the mantle of captain marvel at one point in time but now we're actually getting into the powers of one of marvel's strongest characters monica rambeau aka photon and i love the artwork this is one of the covers there's another cover that is and they got they actually got her hair right and that's that's good. half the battle right there it's especially with good. black characters uh this next one i, I liked it. is a little bit grimy it's a little bit grungy face and skin getting peeled ghost rider issue number nine written by benjamin pierce art by Corey smith and cover by bjorn bardens this only has one cover this is the the creature known as exhaust Johnny Blaze has finally been exercised of his demonic tumor, but it lives on as something new and sentient, a dark mirror of both him and his bike, a creature known as Exhaust. As Johnny and Talia Warroad head toward Chicago, a city known for the blood of its slaughterhouses, a city they believe is central to the shadow country conspiracy. They'll be pursued by Exhaust and the dark forces he manifests. 32 page banger three dollars 99 cents rated t plus and those are your marvel recommendations there's many more out there but these two caught my eye make sure to check them out i think that you guys will enjoy them once you get your hands on them uh buck what we got for dc comics let me go and pull a dc comics up what we got danger street which is not to be confused with stranger street uh <laughs> did you like that i know that was kind of i mean yeah it is on the spot <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to make make small talk while I try to help him put yeah. something together. Real quick. Uh, <laughs> Didn't work, but okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, at least it rhymed, right? Yeah, like yeah, like, like you can't the, go too wrong with rhyming. I feel like it's a Freddy Cougar rhyme. You know what I mean? Like they're not really meant to like inspire like the <laughs> like. Oh man, I want to be a rhyme when I grow up. It's like ah, he's <laughs> doing something. <laughs> <laughs> so Danger Street Volume 1 written by Tom King art and cover by George Fornes uh, very cover by Steve Root uh, this is a 40 page banger 1 of 12 four ninety nine. dollars releases on December 13th of 2022 joining the Justice League is a goal for any superhero but what happens when the quest for memberships take a sinister turn join Starman Metamorph or Metamorpho and Warlord as they look to prove themselves worthy by summoning and defeating Darkshed in battle. Uh, soon they'll learn that calling upon the new god never ends well and their world is headed for a crisis as a result. Uh, this journey is uh, this the journey to save the day will be treacherous one filled with princes, knights, and all kinds of monsters. Each person, the hero encounter, plays a crucial role in this sparring yet gripping narrative that is a little bit silly. A whole lot of dark and a, and completely cool. I try to say it the coolest way possible. Um, but expect the, un, un, expect the unexpected with the supporting cast featuring Manhunter, Lady Copy, the Green Team, and the Creeper. Nice. Yes. Yes. I like the art. Yeah. It looks yeah, like that, it's that, like that, real oh, kind of creepy. Yeah. It almost gives like, you know, and maybe got more of my Star Wars kick. Mm. But, you know, I kind of feel like it's giving like more of a, you know, Star Wars type. 
Mandalorian type feel. down yeah. there. Yeah. Um, the next thing is what's this? Uh, DC Horror presents mm -hmm. uh, Sergeant. Um, sorry, last time I paid. Sergeant hmm. Rock versus the Army of the Undead. Yeah. Uh, written by Bruce Campbell. Uh, art by Idiro Rusiro. Mm -hmm. uh, cover art by Gary Frank. Uh, this is a 32 banger. Volume 4 of 6, 499. Drop in December 27, 22. Uh, Sergeant Frank Rock, Nazi soldier? Worry not. The old Sarge has an ally <laughs> with the Axis, but he's hoping to trick the Nazis into thinking he has. Easy Company finds uh, themselves behind enemy lines disguised as German infantry and they're blasting their way through a horde of zombies to get at the big man hit himself, Hitler. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. He's going down. I, I going like the cover down. art. I thought it was pretty nice. He's uh, headed that way. <laughs> he's headed that way. <laughs> it seemed like something that would uh, jump off the pages, if you will, uh, with a grenade in his hand. But let's keep rocking. Let's go to Image Comics. Uh, let's get a little freaky. This is Hexwire, issue number one, written by Tim Seeley, art by Zulma Lavina. And this drops mm -hmm. December 7, 32 page oh, banger. So <laughs> $3.99. Says, Why sell your soul when you can buy a new one? In a corporate ruled world where class inequity is greater than ever, a desperate, lonely populace is drawn to neo spiritualism and hedge magic when their teenage daughter is murdered the marks family is left asking the gods what they did to deserve this but their android maid <laughs> which where has a different approach perhaps if she's asked the devil a new futuristic miniseries by acclaimed creator tim steely is unleashed upon the world androids uh the magic order meets do androids dream of electronic sheep is the dark mashup of witchcraft and sci-fi so i like the cover i thought this is kind of crazy so, uh, buying your soul selling your soul yeah this is about to be uh, oh, dark vibe going down wild you know. oh, dark vibe going down um and then we have a uh, dark horse comment yes uh, which we're going to wrap this up with. Uh, it's only a teenage wasteland. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Which volume is it? Volume this one? one's volume one. Issue one, yeah. Okay, there we go. How to get the picture up for me. <laughs> no, you good. Instead of making a corny joke, I was just going to make the <laughs> noise. Um, but anyways, uh, this is written by Kurt Press, art by Jacob E. Salado, uh, sure. <laughs> we'll thirty-two banger. That's thirty-two banger coming out on December seventh, three ninety-nine. When his parents go out of town for the weekend, Mexican American high school Javier decides to throw a party. On they'll launch him and his buzz into popularity. Every high school freshman's dreams, or at least get them noticed by some guards. But when things take turn. When things take a turn for the worse, Javier and his friends are thrust into a situation in, in future they could have never possibly prepared for. For fans of the nice house on the lake and what's the furthest place from here, or any other comments really along those titles and cool concepts you would definitely enjoy, it's only a teenage wasteland. Really? There we go. There we go. And those are our comics. Those are the comic recommendations for this month. Uh, okay, so we, we don't really have to get into it. Usually we have a Talia Say character, but we are breaking down. We come back from break, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and then I will give you like a brief spoiler free review or a glimpse at Black Adam because there are some things I was sitting there, I was looking, I was like, Boy, Marvel, what you gonna do when they come for you, you bad boy? Hey, hey he, he put some work in, so. But uh, let's take a quick pause for the cause. Uh, if you like the show, simple, easy thing you can do. It really helps us out. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit the follow, turn on your notifications. And if you're listening on Spotify, five-star rating. It's appreciated because, I mean, you don't have to, but we know you want to. Uh, and with that, we'll be right back from this commercial break. <laughs> Do you love love poems? 
Do you have mediocre to great memorization skills? Do you have fast reflexes and a good ear? Then you need to come down to the Little Bit O Karuta Society to join hundreds of like-minded Karuta enthusiasts such as yourself. Karuta is a game about challenging oneself to be better each and every game while gaining an in-depth knowledge of Japanese history through poems. To join, go to www.patreon.com forward slash bitno anime and sign up on our Karuta Club section and we'll email you directions and instructions to start your Karuta journey today. If you're a person that loves to be by yourself and to destroy things, then come on down to the Goblin Slayer Academy. It's lonely, but you get to use an assortment of tools, swords, knives, clubs, necklaces, wire, poison, water, fire. It never gets bored. But our goal is to exterminate all goblins on this earth. So come on down, sign your waiver, and get started today to be the next Goblin Slayer. Hello, Mr. Billy. Yes, we are back again <laughs> to talk about Black Panther Wakanda forever. But uh, if you guys are listening to that music, Slip.Stream, it's a uh, a website that T-Pain put together for streamers to use music in stream within their streams without being hit with those copyright laws. And Facebook, still behind the time, trying to say this is copyrighted music. It is not, but there's a lot of people that you can use. You can go here. You can go to uh, Rifty Beats, which we also use, or Rustage himself. Who does a lot of anime theme? Uh, if you've ever heard any of his stuff, or if you haven't, you can listen to any of Rant Cafe. He makes some songs for there, but he is a UK anime uh, hip hop uh, creator. So check those out, those guys out. And you can always use those in your streams and have something that's nice, fun, and boppy. So let's let's get into Black Panther Two. Is this gonna be? Is gonna be a spoiler? Yeah, a spoiler? it's been out long enough. Okay. Yeah, it came out like on the 11th. I think we're good for spoilers. So if you guys don't want spoiler for Black Panther, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, I give you a five and a four and a three, and two, a two, one. Okay, let me go ahead and pull this up too. Oh, I forgot I got to do a, a different box. Well, let's go ahead and start talking about it. So uh you hit me with something that was interesting it was like I had, to, I had to give it some time to rest you know i had yeah. to take it out of the oven and set it for five minutes so i did tell I did. me tell uh, me about that while i pull this so up. overall without comparing it to any other movies you guys have been sleeping on the rock uh this is black panther 2 follow up with the success of black panther 1 uh which was you know one of my top marvel films period um this takes place back black panther has died uh, and the new Black Panther is yet to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, they haven't picked one yet. They're having they one to the helm the new. Maybe because Killmonger had destroyed all the, the flowers. <laughs> yeah. To, you know, he is not a, a friend of the ecosystem. Yet. Not a friend of, that was the first thing he wanted to be done. Um, and then, uh, the queen is really by herself as you kind of get a sense of it at the beginning. And... This movie Boy. takes place in um, the lust for vibranium that is amongst the world since Wakanda is now known throughout the world and it's precious vibranium. Um, yeah. This is a story about another nation who does have some vibranium and no one knew about the, the Mayans having... That is like the Mayan race, correct? Yeah. Am I saying it right? Yeah. I don't want to be culturally rude or anything like that no they they um, pulled uh, actual mayans people that live the lifestyle people that are from that culture and incorporated that into the civilization that was namor and his people okay cool so that race had a beautiful backstory and is the other holders of the vibranium uh, and it's the movie was great i loved it uh it, it felt good um course you just you know i'm biased of course because i do enjoy just seeing a you know a, a full cast of just you know beautiful black people um and we got to see some cool cameos from people that uh you know i wasn't expecting to pop up uh mm -hmm. like you know like michael b and whatnot mm -hmm. um and then i was actually curious to see how they're gonna write this story out because i think they were i think ryan coogler was put in a really uh unique situation with you know losing chad 
Uh, yeah. And the, the tribute they did for him was beautiful. Uh, but I think losing him definitely probably impacted the story greatly. Um, so it was unique to see, okay, how can we not only come off this 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 masterpiece, but now we're missing the central main character of this masterpiece yeah. moving forward. And how, how are we going to keep the momentum? How are we going to keep people still engaged? And... Uh, you know, off the top, you know, I, I think they did a good job. You, you got to see the the issues Wakanda has with the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to see a strong queen still holding it down. And then you see this other race. And yeah. so leaving the theater, the issue I had, I was like, damn, man, like shit. Like people don't, <laughs> like, people don't know. Like there's already like tension between blacks and Hispanics. Mm -hmm. like, there's a tension there already. Not on purpose. I don't think none of us like want to do it, but you just kind of get like a weird sense. And when I left, I was like, "Man, why they had a whole movie of us two fighting? <laughs> hmm. Why they got to have a whole movie of us two fighting?" And then, for as what I felt leaving the movie, as a Marvel, all the other movies you see, I guess not all of them, but most of them you just see like one dominant evil person. Even in Black Panther one, they kind of did it with Killmonger. Yeah, but at the same time, Killmonger did recruit all the other black people to fight against the other black people. Yeah, and then here, you know, we see the black people fighting against the Mayans when both of them had vibranium. Neither one of them was really, you know, I'm sure. And, and granted, I know where both sides was coming from. Yeah, I understand that the queen was just kind of volatile. Uh, you know, things aren't stable, as I would say. You know, she's trying to keep her presence known with the, you know, you, you, with, the, with the nations of the world. And then you see this other dude pop up. I mean, he, the way he popped up out the ocean with the, yeah, with the yeah. feathers, that's aggressive. <laughs> it can throw anybody else. I'm not even knocking her on it. Um, but I think emotions kind of ran a lot of this, this movie. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even the queen, you know, getting instantly upset when you know, the princess was technically... Yeah, I'm down there on her free will, like yeah, yeah, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, but I know that was because of the lack of communication between those two. So the queen was just legitly worried. Um, but before I talk about the ending, I did love the the backstory they gave. Uh, what was his name? Namor. Namor. I loved. I loved his. I loved his story. Like I felt it. Like it was like, oh, like, damn. Okay, brother. Yeah. You just trying to save your people. And you know what? You're right. I think more people of the world is going to trip on your people than they would on Wakanda. Yeah. <laughs> Wakanda's hitting, but they're like, oh, this is cool. Your people are underwater. Yeah. Are you related to Neptune? Have you seen Neptune? <laughs> you over, over here flying around on, on sperm whales and you got shaman hey. you up out the water? Oh, yeah. For, I, I understand why he needed his, you know, he was so determined. Uh, the wanting to start a war with the mm -hmm. whole earth was kind of aggressive. I didn't really, uh, I understood why he wanted to do it, but I didn't understand like why now, like, like I think like the urgency. He was like, <laughs> they about to come. Down. We about to come and f this world up. And she's like, huh? The whole world? The whole world, baby girl. We got this. Almost like a kill manga feel because yeah. that's what Killmonger you know was like hey we got all the weapons now hey let's send these weapons out and let's mess up everybody um and Killmonger I felt a little bit more just because his was he was a solo person I guess he was a normal human being as far as like lifespan yeah. um and he understand you know he ain't gonna be here forever so he wants to try to wreak as much havoc as he can basically Mm -hmm. uh, oh boy, you know, shoot for all we know, he 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 been kicking it for a minute, <laughs> yeah. years. Yeah. But anyway, so before we get to the end, t tell me, tell me about your experience. And like the scene you're seeing now, this is the opening scene. You know, T'Challa's death, how they handled it, and they're also doing like the funeral scene. Uh, let me hit on this before we go into it. The funeral scene, people are like, well, why didn't none of the Avengers show up? It's a ritual ceremony. So, first off, when you're using that big fucking brain to complain about some bullshit, like, Wakanda don't do shit like that. Like, T'Challa yeah. came to Tony's, but he didn't, it wasn't all of Wakanda, it wasn't everybody that worked with him, because Okoye would only be there for T'Challa, it wouldn't be the full door of Milaje or Shuri or whatever. 
uh the next thing like <laughs> uh you know no more like having his like the story brought to him and seeing his mom and stuff die and then going back on you know dry land and seeing how things were i think Ugh. he's just used to not seeing that change from from the the the, the ones above land, you know, they always do the same thing and he's kind of tired of it. They came for the vibranium and then they really did, you know, try to do them up as soon. I mean, in that opening scene, I'm not going to lie. The Atlanteans fucked them up. They was like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, like, they, like, they, they, with a, it's nothing like having your homies jumping off, you know, jumping off a cliff pretty much. I mean, yeah, that, that's, the that's sirens. Really dark. Yeah, they had the whole sirens thing popping off. I thought it looked beautiful. Uh, it, it really set the tone of just like how aggressive this isolated village or this isolated you know culture is. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe that played into the fact they were so isolated. They're just like uh, we, surface dwellers are completely different from us. Like yeah. we yeah. don't we don't bleed the same. And so it's so weird that they had such. Well, it's not weird because they use like the same thing the vibranium landed in the ocean and altered the chemical structure of the plant. And when uh, the shaman went down and got it and they all drank it, they all basically underwent the Black Panther witch- ritual. And then he was just born with it. Like it had been infused in his body and kind of made him a little bit different. The wingtip uh, anklets, <laughs> his wings on his ankles. He had like hey, the ears. At first, what's so funny is that at first I was, I was low key clowning them. I was like, oh, dude. I was like, oh man, he got a little anklets. Oh, okay, yeah, you cute dog. Okay, you know, whatever. But then when uh when 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 he raided on Wakanda, oh you yeah, think he was moving. He, I was like, oh, he got the side the side going on. Okay, okay. Bro. He uh yeah he hit every like I was like, bro, if this was a game, like y'all gotta come with it with these graphics. Don't 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 oh, disrespect yeah. no more. He said. My people call me, but you, no more. <laughs> he hit him with that, like, hey, my enemies, like, I ain't even gonna tell you what my real name is. Hey, the only people know me call me Sebastian, but you can call me no more. That's my, that's my gamer tag. That's my gamer handle. And like at every, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Joe Button came on. And he said, man, the first Black Panther they was hitting this, and it was strong. You could tell the strong black people. And he said, anytime they hit it in this one, this motherfuckers was leaving like Indians, like one little, two little, two little, one little. Like I, I, Wakanda I had six people I, at I the very to... end of the movie, bro. Man, I'm um, okay. So before we even talk about the end, so uh, with, with what Joe Button said, and I. Nothing against Joe Button, but me and him really don't be seeing eye to eye no, stuff. No, no. But I will say this: he, 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 he's right. The, <laughs> the way, was... the way this impacted when I rewatched the first one, the way this impacted, like this was like, mm. this one, it was, it was very just. I was like, are they, are they doing it? Maybe it's the other way. Is that is it the wrong arm first? I didn't really even realize. <laughs> <it was the laughs> right no. Arm left arm first and that's what throwing me off they, and- they they did it right it's just like the morning it was so so like you could feel the weight of not having like you said chadwick or you know a black panther and then shuri's reluctancy to do anything to handle her grief was also a heavy toll it more weight. Yeah. yeah it was just literally more weight and um and to kind of piggyback what you're saying one thing that d has said uh uh, Deandra, shout out to her. Uh, that we was when we were leaving the place, she was like, "I do wish I got to see Black Panther more." And it, I didn't really even dawn on me. I was like, "Damn, you're right. We only got to see, you know, Shuri's Black Panther for a brief fight." In which I give Shuri props because you know she adapted very quickly. Um, you know, and, and, and she threw the hands down yeah. uh, with it. You could tell it was a lot more rage of a fight, but. Uh, you go back to Black Panther 1, you know, you see Black Panther almost in the first couple of scenes. Um, and, and I think the fact, too, because it was always you, he was always everywhere. He being the representative for Wakanda, you got a sense of the full spectrum of Black Panther. And, and in the comics, Shuri does kind of hold down both titles, but right now she's just holding down a singular title. Like she just wanted to be in her space and prove science was more than their you know the spiritual aspect of it 
And so it's kind of her journey becoming Black Panther. And I think that's what kind of took people out of it. Because yeah. you didn't see her as Black Panther in the first half of the film, just like no, it was. I feel like it was even more than the first half. And like I said, by the time she and, and what like DeAndre just said in, in the chat, you know, she's I, I did want to see more of Black Panther, uh, but she did embody Black Panther, and I love her. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, because she she did embody. I think when when she was talking to uh, Killmonger, you know, she was able to embody like a different version of just the Black Panther that Chad had. You know, Bro, he, he, like she embodied like a, you know. The, almost like a perfect Black Panther, if you say. The nobility came at the end, but a noble with just the... I'm, I'm about to ask some stuff up over here. Yeah, like, she she had to rise to the case. I, I feel like she became more of a Black Panther when she was down in Atlantis and they were having that conversation and she was looking at the, the civilization, the city, and like, oh, these are people. You know, what is what does it mean to be Black Panther? Was it because she tried to stop... Um, What's name? She's like, no, don't, no, we can save her. And she's like, nah, it's just too late. You got kidnapped. We gotta go. We like, we want some military time shit. Like, oh, you talking about old girl? Yeah, uh, it's like they uh, pulled me out of school for this. Like, I'm saving the, your the ass. Queen came down, bro, to my living room of the classroom to get me come down here to save you. So, uh, we gotta go. Hmm. I will. I will say that. <sighs> How'd you feel about the ending? Let's, 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 let's hit on that. Oh, the ending? Like, okay, so the Black Panther versus Namor scene, the fight scene, super close. No, clever. no, no. Let's actually, let's actually start when Namor rushed through Wakanda. Okay. Well, even let's prior let's even oh, well, even prior to that, like, let's talk about Okoye getting handled. Like, she is doing them up. Okoye took out, like, five of Atlantis' oh, best shoulders. Hey, but hey. Um, this big was boy. Loki. Low key, this was her movie. Hey, this, big this boy, was, this, it was. This was her movie. Dude, it was. It was. She was smooth. She came through. She had the cops on her ass. She came through. She took out big boy. And she really didn't get that before. No, like it was all. I mean, you knew she could do what she needed to I guess do. We did get that before. Never mind. Let me you just didn't get. Down. You didn't get her take like. The stuff like when they weren't in Wakanda wasn't as bad as what it was here. Like around every corner, somebody's really just trying to do her and Shuri up. Like, and they didn't care. And before, you know, doing a lot of soldiers. I think they hit the. T- Let's start off at the beginning. I think they hit the tone, or at least for Okoye, when like you're talking about the world wants more vibranium, and they went in, and they tried to steal it from the research lab, and you had the Dora Milaje, they like pretending to be. Uh, scientists, because they knew they were getting ready to hit this spot. Like, she was the general. You knew. You yeah. knew why she had that structure and she didn't play around. She gave her life to it. And then you felt for her when yeah. Shuri got taken and she was like, I give you my like, life. You knew she was like, you knew. You knew she had that moment. Yeah. We felt it. it was like, oh, yeah, like, and I don't want to harp on it too much. We're already 40 minutes in, but yeah, like, she really got that redemption, and uh, it was funny because the the door Malaza, she didn't have a problem with, but the one that wanted to experiment more with Shuri's technology, they became the Midnight Angels, which in the comics is a separate group, because uh, you guys know what I'm writing that uh, offshoot for the door Malaje Malaje uh, forever, and they are, and you, you, you never really hear about the door dying off they kind of like go their own path if they don't believe in the system or structure anymore and the midnight angels were one group of two that were you know doing it up and like providing that extra special wakanda wear uh when you talk about it in the comics and you can kind of see that transition for her moving on and moving past to something Even in new the comics, they, they did originate from wakanda mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah it was all wakandan um but shiri's journey to get there like being out in the streets she's not helpless using her intelligence uh to to fight no more after he came in like when he came to wakanda i was like queen get away from the window this this dude throwing water bombs at you but he's like he he came to wakanda and at that moment i ain't gonna lie i was like oh huh you you probably could inflict some he came Crucial through Wakanda, to put his feet America on the table. In different, in different uh, nations, you probably, you probably easily could inflict some harsh damage to oh a yeah. lot of people. Yeah. I see why he's ready to bang right now. Yeah, he was. Uh, thanks for liking the show. Thanks for the hearts. He was. Uh, he's going crazy. Like, 
and Mabaku, like Mabaku was coming through. I'm not gonna lie, but he was. but, but uh, old boy yeah, cracked yeah. his chest plate. And he said, "I think I'm bleeding from inside my chest." <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So, but hey, Wakanda came. He he said, "Everybody come to the mountains. It's cold up here. I don't think they want that cold water on their skin." And he said, "They came through and beat our ass." <laughs> and y'all taking up room. What are we gonna do? We need a Black Panther. And yeah. when 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 you talk about Michael B, Michael B is the only dead person his hair grows. I was like, this boy hey, got them long the locks. He had the fade going on. I was but like, man, where, where you sitting at? Super Saiyan three Vegeta. He's Dio Brando. Where, where, where you sitting at, dog? But yeah. um, it was it was that vengeance. Like once she did that, he's like. Your brother asked me to watch you, and she's like, "Hey, I'm about to kill this motherfucker." Like my brother was nice and sweet, you know, but I I can't forgive him. And that's when we saw like Shuri like really get serious about that mantle, and then like kind of get over her hump and take the herb and and go. But Namor was like so highly skilled. Like those years of intelligence kind of showcase that that classic rivalry between Black Panther and Namor that you see in the mm-hmm. comics. And actually they were coming out now where him and T'Challa are working together for a common cause. And I think it's against like the U S if not other co- countries, but the, his assault on the rest of the world kind of shows like he watched how they came after Wakanda for the vibranium and other States that are supposed to be allies are continuing to come. So he's like, well, fuck it. I'll just like overrun the world and we won't have to worry about this. Cause I've already sent a warning and they want to do this shit again, so we ain't doing it. But yeah, it was also and like his, his stuff made logic. His stuff made yeah. logic. And he was like, my my goal is I gotta protect my people, hands down. So he, he's up there with with Thanos, and I'm regardless of what goes down, I'm down. I'm dropping hands. I'm dropping hands. Yeah. But um, Come yeah, let's go ahead and let, let's go ahead and hit on the uh the the little the little snippets you want to give us of the Ooh, the black, black Adam. Adam. Okay, so I will say this. Black Adam was, like, reluctantly black. He's like, uh, we're here for... They show you in the trailer. We're here for your surrender. He's like, playboy. They don't call me champion for nothing. I don't surrender. Like, I'm not turning down a challenge, boy. Like, let's go. And a lot of people are trying to compare, like, fight scenes. Like, there's a scene where Dr. Fate has multiple versions of him, and he's, like, fighting black adam i think the action was really well done the cast adam smasher i think it was a cyclone or hurricane there was like some weird shit like jessica pointed this out like if you again we pointed out in the comics like monica rambo's hair looks like black people hair don't give this girl like a little bitty bun and then when she is out there spinning around her hair is all blown out and she's got this extra weave and shit in her hair like just make the shit that's believable. one thing i did love about black panther yeah I oh did feel like they yeah. they they kept our sisters looking looking natural and beautiful with their locks yeah. uh the mama uh had had oh. the short hair i was yeah, like she into that talking. phase that's what i'm talking about look proud and beautiful but go but go ahead fit, fit, no. finish talking about. um it was it was a nice story i will say pay attention because they give you some misdirects and there's some twist on on who and what is the bad guy but i'm like like when you get to the bad guy i won't say it's a, a movie driven with no plot because it's really like hey uh amanda waller found out that black adam's back and he he goes by his original name 10th adam and it's like oh shit we got to get him because like this is like what really happened back in the day and he could be a possible world threat while he's just kind of coming back out of nowhere uh, don't really want to ruin that part of it, but let me ask you this: They did a good job of introducing Doctor Fate because he hasn't been in any DC. Oh movies yeah, yet, like it was, it, it was basically like, hey, we got a problem. Somebody called the X Men, and then they're, you know, they don't really need to be established. You just know, like, this is the best, the best, mm-hmm. best. I will say, Hawkman had me. Hawkman was on that you know, that energy, bro. But then, like, Black Adam was even more on that energy. <laughs> it's like when they were fighting. There's just like a point where Black Adam was like, my child, <laughs> you have not lived young long enough. You better put them wings, put them wings up. I'm going to turn them into hot wings right now. Like mm-hmm. they kind of went at it and, and you could tell he was, he was that motherfucker that was like player, two, like Hawkman was player two and he just keeps losing. He couldn't take it no more. He's like, ah, 
I'm going to try everything. And Black Adam is just that he's Mario. You know, Mario is uh, the hero. So, yeah, yeah. And then the action was really well. Like, you have him throwing motherfuckers into motherfuckers. Like, the camera angles were done really well. I think that kind of helped with some small story plot holes. But it, they grounded in in what society would think based off of religion and text and history. It was like a little archaeology feel, um, DC Comics, and then action. So I give it a solid B+. Plus. Let me shoot you this then. So as far as DC him. films go, like, where would you rank this at as far as, like I said, DC films go? Like I said, like a B plus, so it's not up there with like the Joker, the Batman, or Wonder Woman. It'd probably be. I'm trying to think of all the the movies they put out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all, all, all that. <laughs> I would I would put it around like Wonder Woman two ish, like above that, but like okay. right in that spectrum of like being a B to an A. Because the the narrative the thing focus I felt like was was lacking or not lacking, but it was it felt this. I felt like it felt like maybe was disengaged at certain points. Yeah, I would want more of a stronger tie to the villain, which there is one, and it does explain the story. But I wanted a little bit more because like when we get to our villain, it's basically kind of like Joffreyism a little bit. He's not really Machiavellian, but is he's it kind of like what to be. Did? It said what? Kind of what love of the love of thunder did, Ooh. or even, even even more lackluster than love of thunder. No, I say it's more more exciting than that. But it's it's when you said Thor and love and thunder, there was something I, that popped in my head and I already forgot. It's like a mix of that and something else, because okay. like Thor, love and thunder, you had like multiple stories, like the love story and then the action. This is basically one story. Uh, about a man kind of accepting what has happened but also expectation and like does he bend to that does he not you know superhero okay. what's a hero what's a villain so that's okay. why I said it's like a, a high B low A okay so yeah cool. check it out go see it uh, it makes yeah, it better you can, even, you can even like rent and buy it on YouTube now yeah we're gonna oh, cool man. we're gonna cool it on flicks for a minute cause they done fucked up they you know, you know how it is. Like, you know how we had to cool it on Tamashi for a minute. Yeah, yeah. I, like, did you like the food? Uh, well, we ordered, and nobody. Like, oh, we're behind. Sorry. And then like Jessica's like cancel it, which I knew she would have been. And they were like, we'll, "We'll take it off your tab, and we'll take the the gratuity off, and this." And then we're like, like "I know, no, no, see you is." I was like, "I'm glad that we saw our movies because you're uh, fucking it up." Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. This past time we went, it wasn't uh, that good. No, the food was the food was trash. Well, I know D and K didn't they didn't care for the food, and uh, I had I wasn't hungry, so I just had some popcorn. But the but the bowl was wet. Yeah. Like you could tell they, they didn't dry off the bowl, and I'm not trying to sound lost to Diddy and everything, but there's certain foods that you, you need, need like a dry bowl for. You have to have a dry bowl. Hey. And popcorn, I think, is on like Did the you? top of the list <laughs> of you won't to be in a dry did, container because uh, if not it's going to be soggy wet. did you watch Dahmer he's like hey what's this in the cup oh it's probably just like some soap like yeah. you better bring me a dry a brand new I, cup I, 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 ain't, I ain't gonna lie yeah yeah uh, and D said in the, in the comments he said yeah the food was not great yeah my popcorn was wet and I was like uh you know WTH yeah I was just like uh, and even like said Caius's french fries was cool but even his chicken was just Subpar, and oh, I asked bro. for like I think she was like, You want a 16 or 20 ounce pour? And for the price difference, and it's just four ounces, the 20 ounce makes no sense. It's, it you it sounds tempting because yeah. they're selling you know, it's more, yeah, they're selling it's more, but then when you get it, I was like, This what I pay extra for? Suzuki. So I ain't gonna lie, next time I go back to the next time we go back to movie theater, I want to go back to uh, I want to go back to showbiz. Mm. That was the one off of I-35 and Covell, which is kind of set up like Flix. Yeah. It has a little bit bigger. Like, it has a bowling alley in there, too. But I need to go yeah. back there to experience something bad to make me want to appreciate go Flix. Flix. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like going to give it time and be like, bro, your drinks have been on point. Don't fuck it up from here. So 
Um, let's go ahead and just dive right in to uh, Anime and Manga of the Month because we are we're close to, <laughs> to need yeah, to wrap this yeah, up. Yeah, we are about forty nine minutes in. Uh, let me go and head on. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to change the world for the better? You never really know how to go about it, right? How to structure your world of peace can be frustrating and confusing, but if you pledge your allegiance to me, Kira, then I'll give you your very own Death Note. With the Death Note, you have the ability to pick and choose who deserves to stay and help you create this world of your dreams. Just remember to turn in your Death Note with your name written in it to me by the end of the day. Okay, now let's make a change to this world together. Is your top knot in a twist? Does your straw hat keep messing with your man bun? Cut down on snags and unsightly tangles with Samurai Stay without a hair out of place. Or Ronin Around, a special frizz-free formula for our swordsman with curly hair. Both now available in the new Samurai Sunflower scent. Anime of the month is the laughing or laughing under the clouds. Let me actually stop the music real quick. Um, is the laughing under the clouds? Did I already write the description for it? Because I cannot find it. I, I thought you did. I thought it was up there. But like, I, I have the full screen mode going on so we can watch this trailer of the anime that there, you're not talking okay, about. Okay, here we go. <laughs> laughing under the clouds. Uh, it's a fantasy trailer. When swords were outlawed, or outlawed in the mm. Maje era, the mighty samurais began to disappear. Those who rejected the band rebel, rebel, causing unrest throughout the countryside. To combat this activity, to combat this criminal activity, an inescapable lake prison was constructed. Three young men, born of the Kumo line, was given the duty of delivering criminals to this place of com confinement. But could there be more to their mission? Hmm. Uh, I got the wrong dates here, but this anime is 24 episodes long. It's one solid season, nice. which was great. Um, I loved it. You can watch it on Crunchyroll right now. One thing I did like about it the most was the fact that um, it... Uh, wow, and actually, I apologize. I think the trailer I'm showing is for the other Laughing on the Clouds. It's like I guess they they're making a three film collection of it. Mm, okay. uh, oh, that's dope! That got me excited. Um, but I love it because it's about these three brothers, and it got the humor in it. It yeah. got uh, a sense of you know the big brother's OG, so you get to hear about his backstory, the people he used to run with, and then you know you got the middle brother that's trying to be like the big brother, yeah. uh, but you know he's mm. just a scrub. And then you got the baby brother, it's just a baby brother. Hmm. And then, well, I love by they also talk about the, uh, what's that, uh, Orochi curse. You know, we hear that amongst yeah. many different animes and even video games, even about the Orochi. The Orochi is a, you know, a snake like dragon beast. Uh, like that hydra. devours. Yeah. yeah, that devours a lot. And in this, in this, you know, story, it comes back every like 300 or 400 years or something like that right and it inhabits someone so it like possesses someone and takes them over so yeah. one of the missions is you know trying to find out who's going to be the next vessel for the shirochi uh and it's, it's a good story really good uh you could tell it had like a nice probably compact budget uh mm -hmm. there were some things that i was just like man yeah. i know for a fact that they had more money this fight fire. would have been epic but yeah. you know funds are fun so but i yeah I, I give this this was a solid a solid gold title to me nice. i knocked it out yeah it was good it was yeah it looks good like i can't wait to dive into that like i need some of that uh and what's the title again uh laughing under the clouds you can so you can watch it on crunchy perfect so that's your anime of the month manga of the month is neolation a technical delinquent and a regular delinquent takeover that the japanese criminal world and i love the art for this this has been on my queue for a while as you can tell, he's eating like a hot dog already at a hot dog stand, a Coney Island stand. But it's very vibrant. It's a mix between Jujutsu Kaisen, Bleach, and I'd say even Haku. I was going to say Naruto, but Haiku. Uh, and it's just like, it's really funny. Once you get into it, I like the character design for each one of these characters. Like the attitudes, because you can I tell like, the face. in the back does look like, uh, like one of the characters I'm looking at does look like a uh, oh boy. 
Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Yuji. Yeah, Yuji, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's like crazy because they're using smartphones. He's super intelligent. It's almost it almost feels like a manga that was written out of Bakum, Bakuman, which is a series about writing manga. And they had like a spy that was very intelligent about the way that he caught people because he could also do disguises. But yeah, this is the the series that we're going to read this month. Um, I actually caught up on a lot of series. Black Clover came back out, which I think, oh boy, Ooh, is... I, I didn't see oh, okay, I'm not going to say nothing. Yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. Uh, Neolation is your manga of the month. Thank you guys for joining us for episode 339. We're not trying to keep you any longer than we have to, but today was our comic <laughs> episodes. Um, make sure to check out the recommendations that we gave you. Check out Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and also Black Adam. Great titles, great movies. Uh, I'm, I can't wait to see more from Black Adam. I can't wait to see more. I think uh, from like the Wakanda, because they do say Black Panther will be back. But they did say that DC is holding up Henry Cavill from coming back as Superman. So we'll have to see if we get Black Adam versus Superman. Or if it's going to be Shazam and Black Adam. Ugh, excuse me. But yeah, we went through all that. Uh, and then the anime and manga of the month make sure to check them out because they are very fun they're hilarious they're good reads good follows good watches um, and then if you're looking for more titles just let us know because we have them each and every week for you let the people know where they can find you buck they find me at the buckety uh, on twitch uh, i think me and Kaden are going to be streaming cuphead this week uh nice. cross our fingers right there on the last mission so hopefully we're going to just try we're going to start an early stream and just Keep going until we can beat the dang game. Nice. Uh, put it to rest finally. Finally be able to start on the DLC. Uh, but uh, tune in for that. Um, and then you can also find me, like I said, everywhere else. The Buckety, B U T or B U C K I T Y, I believe. <laughs> and you can, I mean, it's underneath your your title, your tag. You can find me and the show at Edge 2 Gaming anywhere. Uh, I know that they have clear tags for YouTube, so you should be able to go to Edge 2 Gaming and see our logo there, where you'll have uh, copies with replays and live videos of the stream that we do every Monday, 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, live here. Uh, you also get gameplay like Gungrave, uh, <laughs> Dragon Ball Fighters, just whatever I want to play. I think I'm going to jump back into Pyre Warriors 4 and some other things. Um, but yeah, continue to show your love, your support. Thank you for liking the stream. Thank you for jumping in the chat to comment. If you do have Amazon Prime, you can uh, use it here for either Edge 2 Gaming or the Buckety on Twitch. Especially if you have Prime, you get a free one every month. You just have to re-up every single month. Um, yes. And check out our friends. Make sure to jump into shows, turn on notifications as we regularly stream throughout these weeks. But I appreciate you guys for jumping in for comics. Next week is anime. We'll always have more to talk about since you haven't read Black Clover. We'll talk about that. And we'll talk about, because we haven't yet, the conclusion of um, Tokyo Avengers and how we felt about that. Uh, yeah. uh, we, we need to talk about how, how yeah. we got behind on Berserk after we were waiting Yo, it to come badly, out. Badly. But badly. Like, it's, cra it's so crazy you say it because I was just looking at that Saturday. <laughs> this past Saturday, I was like, whoa, I don't even know what's going on. Exactly. Let me let me stop. And it, and I, it, it ended so time. well where we were, yeah. I need time to, like, I got to be, read. like, in the peaceful mode to really soak that in. I, I can't just quickly just be reading that. I got to soak that in. Yeah, I know. I'm right there. And then I don't we, know what the hell is going on. And then I think this upcoming month, or either January, Dragon Ball Super is coming back. Yeah. So. And then we also get that last episode of uh, Tokyo Revengers in January too. Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of good shit. So, uh, thank you guys for jumping in. Thank, thank you guys you. for joining us. Uh, we will be back next Monday with another episode, 340, talking anime and the things that you love, uh, right here at the Elijah Bailey Show. All we got is uh, make sure to party on, Garth. Party on. We'll see you guys in the next stream. Peace.
Hey, what's up, everybody? Elijah 5000 here. Me and the Buckety appreciate it so much that you download this show each and every week. Again, we drop every Thursday. If you're new to the Elijah Bailey Show, go to Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Spotify, or wherever you listen to this auditorial pleasure that you get weekly, and just subscribe, rate, and review. Thank you, and I'll catch your ass in the next podcast.